Hello and welcome to another episode of Soul Nectar Show, that show that talks about all things essence, where you can imagine you're sitting around the campfire and sharing life stories of profound moments and insights and connections with that which is bigger than us, the divine, the great spirit, God, eternal source, creator, universe, your self in the highest way, whatever your words are for that. It's totally acceptable, thousands of names for that which is bigger than us. And I'm your host, Carrie Hummingbird. I love these kinds of conversations that we have on the show. They light me up. I, I just love my understanding after every broadcast. I'm expanded in my knowing. And I hope that you are too. I hope that you continue to tune in and bring yourself to these conversations and find yourself in it. So today, I'm very excited to invite my friend, uh, Dr. Lynn Morrell, to be with us. Welcome, Dr. Lynn. Hey, it's great to be here, Carrie. So Lynn is a thought leader, visionary, intuitive, and peacemaker. For decades, she's worked with individuals and organizations committed to transforming their lives and the lives of those they touch. Her ability to access the unseen, multidimensional, energetic aspects of challenges has impacted millions of people, helping them reach peak levels of performance, mastery, and the expression of their innate brilliance. And so if you want to get to know more about Lynn, you can look up her website, lynnmorell.com, which is L-I-N. M-O-R-E-L.com. And of course, that's in the show notes. And so you don't need to like take out a pen and write it down. You can just visit the show notes and find it at soulnectar.show. So Lynn. Yes. Oh, you have so many stories to share. And it's, uh, you know, when we connected to discuss this broadcast and we came up with ideas about what we would talk about. And then as we were starting, I realized, what's the point of that? Because everything is different now. <laughs> it all changes. It all changes. So I'll tell you what's up for me right now is expansion, you know, is the, the topic of expansion because as we get blessings and gifts uh, from the creator, as we, you know, we share our heart and we feel this desire and we say, oh, I would love to experience this or that or this other thing. Or, you know, for me, it's being a way shower. I, that's my newest thing. I love the idea of being a way shower and, and showing, you know, guiding people along the, the, the beauty way, the beauty way of life, you know, and I know you know what that is. And we're going to talk about that, I guess, a little bit. But I love being this idea of guiding people along to the, to the way. And because it makes me happy to be on the way. And then I want to invite more people. And I've been blessed with expansion in 2019, which is wonderful. And now, you know, as you get the next thing you want, then you realize the next challenge. And I was like, oh, I've got to expand to receive all this. <laughs> My whole life is changing and everything's weaving together in a new way. You know, talk about your, you know, your expansion. I mean, your life has expanded in so many beautiful ways since you started on this planet. And so maybe your heart is talk is going to call to you to share some of your brilliant stories with us. Oh, <clears throat> thank you, Carrie. Well, you know, I think you hit the nail on the head. Expansion is the name of the game. And yet this planet is a planet of contraction. And so I like to talk about living on the edge of the expansion where I don't have a clue what's next. And the way that I can support myself in moving toward what I would prefer, because sometimes I may want something that's not for my highest and best and it gets blocked. And the old me was saying, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> I've done that. And, and the new me goes, huh, isn't that fascinating? So it's expansion or contraction. It's, it's um, a Chinese principle. I studied, you know, I studied in mainland China. I studied at the University of Beijing. I studied in Taipei. I've studied with indigenous peoples. Because like you, I've been curious about what is inside of me and the infinite um, worlds of Lin, you know, and who I was as a 10 is very different than 17, which is different than 32, which is different in your 60s. And, and through your entire life, we have a choice, and yet it's a choice that's not popular because it means we admit we don't know. So my favorite words to say when I work with clients or with companies, they'll say, well, what should I do about this? And I go, well, I really don't know, but that's a great question. Let's explore it. And the person always has the next step inside of them. 
That goes for you and me. And, and we know sometimes in advance, we get clues. But when we want to have control, which we equate to safety, it really isn't, it's a cage. But it's the number one addiction on the planet. We want it our way so we'll feel safe. But safety is a cage. And if, for me, I look at my safety is the fact that I'm breathing, the fact that I have a certain level of connection to whatever it is that breathes me, so that when things come to me that are random clues, I pay attention. So I'll, you asked for a story. Would you like me to give Yeah, Yeah, I because I, I'm resonating with everything you're saying. I have like a zillion stories to support what you're saying. So please share yours. <laughs> and I will. And, and what I'd like to say is I'm also considered a way shower. What I've learned is the best way for me to show people is to be myself. So wherever I go, there I am. And what you see is what you get. And if I need to say something, I'll say it. And I no longer try to expect people to read my mind. You know, I have enough trouble reading my own mind. Oh, I don't want to read my mind. I want to read my entire beingness because the mind is kind of a, it makes stuff up. And it fills in between A and Z. It does B to Y. And that may not be true. <laughs> so, so here's a story that's, that's very recent. So about six months ago, I'm in my Aikido class. And my teacher says something to me and I looked at him. I said, well, that's great, but I'm going to be gone soon. Now I've been in this class for eight years. I've been in California for 25 years. I had no intentions of going anywhere, but people kept coming into my life saying, oh, you're going to be moving soon. Don't get so comfortable. And the day that I signed my lease for another year, it's like, I wouldn't be in such a hurry to sign your lease. I said, I know I'm going to move within the year. And, and this was a total stranger that someone who was a thought leader brought to meet me so I could work with them. So I just, you know, yeah, I got my rent and I got my lease and I love where I live, you know, six blocks from the beach and I'm spoiled. I like warm weather. So one thing leads to another. And remember life happens and we get lots of clues because it's a game. I look it at is a game. I love that you said that. It's a game. And, it's like a scavenger we hunt. Win, we can win the game if we cooperate with whoever authored the game. So I can't demand that the game be different than the way it's presenting itself to me. It's like a kid throwing a temper tantrum. I don't want to play with those rules. These are my rules. But our rules don't get us where we want to go because if we try to fight gravity, we're still going to drop the apple. But the long and the short of this is I was pretty obstinate about not coming to visit, visit a friend and her husband back east, my dearest friends for 25 years. So she begs me to come every so minute. So often she does. So she calls me up and says, Lynn, I really need you to come visit us. And I need you to come now. I said, well, you know that I don't do winters in the East Coast. She goes, no, you need to come be here for us. So I'm thinking about it. You know, it's short notice. I've just come back from Austin. I've been traveling other places. I want to be home for at least a week. So I say to her, well, if I can find a really inexpensive or free ticket, I'll consider it, but most likely in the spring. So my friend passes away like the next day. And the last two times she had told me some things that only my deceased husband knew 12 years ago when he was on his deathbed. He made, uh, he made me promise something. And I said, only if you vet it. It's not a common word. You know, and so, you know, he's been gone. And it, last December, someone who's a thought leader at a global influence summit said, by the way, da 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 about my deceased husband. And they used the word vet. Two months later, someone used the word, oh, your deceased husband is here. Um, he said he vetted the person. And then my friend who passed away says, you know, Lynn, James is here in spirit. And he's very, very, very tall. He's so tall, I can't see his head in the clouds. I said, what's he want? This is the third time in six months. You know, he said he vetted the guy and all you need to do is decide. True story. So I'm now engaged to somebody that I've known 25 years. It's been easier than I can imagine. I've had to book flights to see clients because I, I got a $90 ticket less than five days before I was coming to the East Coast, which of course I wrote a goal. I'm winning the game of an inexpensive or free ticket that's better than I can imagine. And I had written goals for a better than I could imagine new relationship who loves God first, loves himself second, loves me equal to himself. We work together. 
And then I also wrote goals for my new home because I knew I was going to be moving. So I wrote goals for a home in the country, in nature, with a body of water nearby. I said it would be really nice to have a non-chlorinated pool and jacuzzi and yada, yada, yada. These are goals. I write them every day. Here's my goal book. I have one for goals. I've been doing this 40 years and one for my blessings. And every time, this is how you build expansion. Every time I have a win, which means, oh, I won a next step in the game of life. I'll write it down. Wow. What a contrast today. I write goals every day for amazing clients that are fun, do the work. They're compatible. They love to pay me well, give me bonuses and profit sharing. It's my goal. And I only work with thought leaders and people that are changing lives. So, you know, when it doesn't line up, I say, oh, that's very good. Thank you. So for me, I had a temporary contraction last night. This person who wasn't quite a fit, but talked the talk and knew everything that there was to know about personal growth, you know, and there was no room for him. His cup was already filled up. Yeah. You can't learn anything if your cup's full. No. And so, you know, he gave me his credit card. He was, by the way, I need to run this by my business part, which means he's changed his mind, but he doesn't know that his business part wants to work with me. And so I get this text, you know, it's da, 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 da. And I went, wow, I just gave him a complimentary session that rocked his world. And then I thought, oh my God, thank you that this happened before he hired me. That's how I'm winning the game. So for me, that would be a contrast. You know, this is a client who looked good from the outside upon closer examinations does not fit my criteria. We don't expand in life because we're unwilling to risk being big. So where I'm moving has a pool, a jacuzzi, an infrared sauna. It's a mile and a third to an incredible state park. And, and it's exquisite. And I wanted a place close enough to the airport, but a far enough away from the city. And every single great eight areas of my life, I write about relationship. I write about health. I, work, I write about finances and expansion financially. I write about ex- expanding my genius mind, you know, my flow, my synchronicity, and decreasing anxiety. Those goals go in my book in some iteration every day. Some of them have been in my book for almost 12 years including the gentleman that I'm going to marry who brings everything that I've written about in my new home here now. And it was a total complete surprise. I've adored this person for years. He refers to me. I refer to him. He's an extraordinary healer and a doctor and it's a match made in heaven. So that's why I say expansion. We live on the edge of not knowing. Now some part of me knew that something big was coming. People kept showing up. I had five people from different ends of the country saying, you are going east, correct? You know you're supposed to go east. And I said, no, I don't want to go east. I was in my contraction. I like my home. I like my life. I like the people where I live. Why do I want to move to the cold? Well, because that was my expansion. And so that's a story that's live off the press from December to now. That's wonderful. You know, yeah. I, I like several aspects of that story. I resonate. I resonate with the aspect that says you set your goals or your heart's desires and you say, wow, I'd really love to experience this scenario. Mm-hmm. And then uh, it takes however long it takes for that to manifest. Because like, okay, I have a, I have a story. So like this year I'm launching my group, my group programs. So I'm expanding my capacity from individual clients to holding a container for dozens of clients all at once. Okay, mm-hmm. so that is a big expansion, right? Because <laughs> going from one phone call with one person and kind of tracking what's going on with them to managing a call where there are dozens of people and managing that, that's, that's a different thing. Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, uh, my heart said a number. It said, oh, I want a sold out circle. I want 16 people in each of my circles. And as I started the circles this week, I got pretty close. Like I got, you know, half of my, my first circle, a co-ed circle is like halfway full. It's like, you know, eight people. Mm -hmm. And I was feeling into that this morning because I was like this little tiny bit of disappointment. Like, but I said I wanted this much and I got this much. And then I Mm -hmm. sat back just like you were saying, I was like, okay, how is this for me? I was like, well, I think that the creator would like me to take better care of myself and not be so demanding on myself because I'm just 
I just stepping in to group work. And so I need to expand my own container, my own capacity to weave together all the aspects of my life so mm -hmm. that I'm in flow and I'm demonstrating self-care. And then at that point, as I'm demonstrating self-care with all the aspects of my life, plus this new responsibility, then like more people can come in because I'm not going to be compromising myself. So it's that like, it, it might not show up exactly what you think, but maybe it's, be, it's, I think it's always, every time I've looked at it, it's always because my creator loves me so much and knows that mm -hmm. I'm going to overgive. <laughs> like I'm going to overcommit, overgive, overdo, because I have such a passion to be of service. So tell me what your reflections and, are on that. It's so exquisitely accurate that you only have eight. I started doing group work in the, in the late 70s and 80s. And so I would hear a number in my head and then I would hear what supplies to buy, which I ran a retreat center. And uh, one day I'm driving home from a, a workshop that I did at a farm. And I think I had like, I don't know, 15 or 20 people. And then I heard pull into this strip mall into a Hallmark card store. And I'm going, why am I here? They had a 50% price off stuffed animals. And I heard 12 people were coming. So I bought 12. And then I put them on the various beds at my retreat center. And the guy who, who got his bed, his childhood nickname was Squirrel, and he had the squirrel. And so each stuffed animal represented a quality that they were going to do. But I started with maybe the first group. I maybe had 10 people, but it was just a one evening couple of hours. And then I had to grow, and there wasn't the technology that there was now. So back in the day, there was a telephone line tree, you know, like call one who calls one who calls one. So if I was coming to town, I'd call the key person and it would spread like candles lighting, two, four, eight, 12, and I'd have 200 people in the room and I'd just have to show up. And then- That's of course, awesome. I welcome that. Well, though these times have changed now because it's a lot harder with all the technology. I, I build relationships and some of them are 40 years old at this point, but that's how I- built my business and it's like oh my god i have to speak in front of 200 people get over yourself morel yeah. it's not you speaking you're the vessel you're the vessel it's my flowing through always that anything that i say or do anything that i hear or see be filtered through loving <sighs> and i loving was not a word i used when i was younger it was about the struggle it was about the trauma and the drama and the gift of expansion is you get really curious about, well, that's an interesting story. Why would I hold on to that now? I have a beautiful life. I've been widowed two times. I lost men I absolutely adore. And yet, why would I keep my heart shut? You know, there's the old thing, oh, my heart's been broken. Baloney. The only thing we can do <laughs> is ourselves and what we tell ourselves. You know, and, and so my husband on his deathbed, we didn't know. He died actually of a hospital error that they very lovingly covered up but he died of a drug overdose they administered and they hit everything. I had a really good opportunity for a big story and boy, was I mad. And yet the truth was that was his time to leave the planet, you know, and, and that was my time to go solo again. And so I've spent almost 12 years solo. I don't need a relationship. I have one with myself and that's not in a selfish way. It's that whatever breathes me, as long as I'm in alignment with that and I write my goals and I let go of attachment, but here's a clue. I start my, every day with I'm winning the game of, because like I said, it's a game. And like this game called transformation, our job is to gain awareness, overcome setbacks and do service. And that's a recipe for a love filled life. It's easy to love people that are lovable. It's hard to be charitable to people that are grumpuses. Or what it I sure call grumpypotamus. You know, you're so grumpy, you can't be in the room. But then to continue expansion, one of, the, one of the games I play is I'll say, God bless you, I love you, peace, be still. Inside of myself to the grumpy waitress or the, the um, oh my God, whatever bureaucracy I'm dealing with. And so I bring my cheerful self where I used to go, rawr, 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 it's customer service. Rawr. Now it's like, oh my God, you have such a hard job. I don't know how you do it. And you're so sweet to me. And then they just go, oh, and they melt. You know, and so expansion means we all expand. 
when each, you know, like I live on a marina, so when the tide comes in, all the boats rise. So when we're living on the edge and dancing with expansion, we lift everybody or we contract everybody. And if we could understand that if we put a thought in the lake of life or the ocean of life, that ripple goes on infinitely. Can you imagine like what you said, if you take care of yourself and start with eight, and then maybe you'll double to 16, which is they have partners, that's still eight, you know, and, and do it to the point where I, I mean, I've done speeches for over a thousand people, you know, and I only had two weeks out because the speaker canceled and they called me. Huge thing at the MGM. And, and they said, well, can you do this in two weeks? I said, yes. And I hung up and went, ah! <laughs> How am I going to do that? <laughs> I listen to clues. It's like, you need to go to Salvation Army. Now, that's not a really obvious clue. I say, why in God's name would I go to the Salvation Army? And then it said, well, you're going to take clothes off on stage at the MGM. I said, whoa, 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 now. Talk to me about this. <laughs> so, and it was about taking off what you're not to be who you are. For all the Native American casino owners in the whole United States, it was a very big crowd of very suspicious people. So I went in two days early. In the Salvation Army, I bought a, a, a jumpsuit that was two sizes too big. I also... Um, had a Tai Chi uniform on it because I practiced Tai Chi. So when I'm in front of this crowd, it's all like, you know, I said, I took my hat off and I threw it in the audience. That got their attention. Then I took my scarf and then I took off the suspenders and then I took off the jacket under the suspenders. And by now they're paying total attention. And I had high heels on. I kicked them off. Every person is paying attention. And I said, how many of you dress up and put on faces that are too big or don't fit you and you're not yourself? And so that transformed an audience that could care less about this woman speaking that they've never met and don't know and I'm not from their tribe into one of them. And that was a risk, but I was safe because I'd kept journals and diaries at that point for probably 30 something years about this was my intuition. This is what I did. This is the result. This is my intuition. This is how I ignored it. This is what happened. <laughs> yeah. And I'm a it's scientist. better when you listen. I love that you say that, scientist, being curious. Because a lot of people, um, one of the things I do with people in my, in my program is I introduce them to this idea that they have support. And that they can actually invite the support using an indigenous tradition, which is welcoming the four directions mm -hmm. on the earth. Because exactly. that really helped me. Like when I found this path and I was taught how to open sacred space and invite the four directions and invite the earth and the sun and the moon and the stars and the great spirit. Like my whole life changed. Everything changed. So I teach people this. I say, okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to open sacred space for you and just listen and perceive and feel mm -hmm. if you can tell the difference between like the winds of the South and the winds of the West and the winds of the North. Like, do they feel different? Does the energy feel different to you? And then they perceive it. And they have a big opening. They're like, wow, I haven't felt connected for a long time, but that I feel connected in this moment. I was like, okay, great. Now go home and practice it. And they always say like, I feel so weird and awkward because I like having to do something I'm not used to doing. And I'm like standing there like saying these words, but I don't really know what they mean yet. And I don't have any context and I'm building it for myself. And you know, I think it's like that beginning of listening. You know, it's that um, when our, our culture, our world is so busy thinking and filled up with thought. Too many thinking is what my guide told me for a long time. Mm -hmm. Too many thinking, Carrie. Too many thinking. Mm -hmm. And as I cleared that out through the surrender, which is what you're talking about, as you clear all that stuff and you go into don't know mind and you go into curiosity like, wow, I wonder what's going to happen when I open sacred space this morning. Oh, I wonder what's going to happen if I get really quiet and still and listen. And I wonder where it'll take me today. Like, I wonder what game we're playing today with the great spirit. Like, I feel that way too. I feel like it's a game. It's like fun. It's like I look a, like a little kid. And I'm like, on Christmas morning at the end of my seat, like, okay, what's going to happen today? What new thing am I going to learn? Or what experience am I going to have that's going to open me more? It's, it's so, it's so, and you know, it's so multicultural what you just said. You know, in a Christian community, the, the breast praise to the Christ, Christ before me, Christ to the right, Christ behind, Christ to the left, Christ above, Christ below, Christ within. And, and there's that. There's the Buddhist tradition. There's so many traditions 
that teach us how we can ground and center ourselves. And in the native traditions that I've studied, the South is the place of the innocence, faith, and trust of the child. And children speak the truth before they're smacked for speaking a truth grown-ups don't want to hear. And so we forget our innocence. But getting curious, we should just think, Mommy, why is the sky blue? I write goals like, I wonder how amazing today is going to turn out. I just, I'm winning at having it be filled with delightful surprises. And I will actually write goals for financial wins. Like I would like a financial increase today. And I'm so grateful. I can't wait to follow the clues. And some of those clues are like calling an old client who pops into my head. Or I go to a, a, I went to a party that I had no desire to go to, but my friend wanted me to meet the owner of the company because I needed to work with her and that's still in the works. And it's like, okay, I'll cooperate. And I had a great I'll cooperate. I'll cooperate. Cooperation, acceptance, being aware when your body's tight. That's a really big clue. But how many of us are taught to suck it up and push through? You know, like what you're talking about, flow and synchronicity, that's a sign of the spirit, joy, happiness, hitting your head against the wall, looking for a light switch isn't the most effective way to use your head. Taking your hand maybe and sliding along the wall will be a lot safer. And yet how many of us are taught it's been done that way, it's always going to be done that. That's the way my grandma did it. That's the way I'm doing it. Yeah, but grandma didn't have cell phones. Grandma didn't have an electric sewing machine, you know. So the, the, little, the edge of creation is where all the action is and it's where all the joy is. And it's actually where the safety is. Because when you're present, and again, I live on the ocean, so I see a lot of surface every day by the pier. They're hang 10. I never, never knew what it meant. It's when you're hanging your toes over the edge of the surfboard and you're dancing with the wave. And we're here to dance with the breath and to dance with life and to dance with grief and with joy. And when feelings come, feelings aren't facts. They're just feelings. And we have about 50,000 plus random thoughts during the day. And some of them may be accurate, but most of them aren't. You could be, you know, standing next to a grumpus in the store and all of a sudden you're really angry. Yeah, and you're picking up on their thoughts. Anger is contagious. So the path, whatever path we follow, when we follow it with the innocence and the curiosity and the acknowledgement, wow, I had a crappy day today. What did I learn from that? Oh, I didn't do my morning warm-ups. I didn't do my morning meditation. That opens me. So I do things to fuel peace inside of me. And one of those things is when I meet people that are less than peaceful, I bring my peace and offer it to them. And then they all of a sudden they go, wow, I just feel better right now. You know, and so we each carry the seeds of being a peacemaker and a joy bringer and someone who can share in time of sorrow and be present in time of joy without being too wide on either end. We bring our present moment and it's, it is a present. I mean, it sounds trite, but, You know, you're on a path, I'm on a path. There's maybe 7 billion people. There's 7 billion ways to get to awareness. And everybody has somebody that if they can just take a breath in their deepest turmoil, we're never alone. Whatever breathes us, we don't control it. You know, when I lecture in front of in medical integrative conferences and stuff, you know, uh, and they ask me to speak about spirit and body, mind, and soul and stuff like that. I'll say to them, how, do you, how many of you physicians hear the word soul and groan? And there's this nervous laughter. And I say, <laughs> okay, I get it. I totally get it. Okay, would you be game to do a little bit of data research for me? Okay. I said, because I'm a scientist first, you know, and then I let them know I won an economic scholarship and I was pre-med and blah, blah, blah. And then I said, okay, I'd like you to hold your breath. Everybody take a deep breath on the count of three, hold it as long as you can, and then let it go. And then I hear titillating laughter as they take their breaths. I said, great. Okay, that's fantastic. How many of you have ever lost a patient? Ooh, a lot of hands go up. How many of you expect that that patient wanted that breath more than any other breath they ever wanted? Oh, I said, that, my friend, is what I call soul. The energy that breathes us 
that's part of something greater than us. And all of a sudden, I have a common language. So regardless of what our religious faith tradition is, regardless of whether, you know, the word dog is God spelled backwards. I mean, there's lots of things. Evil is live spelled backward. Devil is lived spelled backwards. There's lots of fun ways to approach our expansion. But when you find a thing inside that makes you go, ah, oh, and it might be a puppy, a, a plant, a child, someone you love, a movie that makes you cry. There's a million ways to find yourself. And we're all on a path and we're all our own way shower, Carrie. Isn't that just so cool? I think it's amazing. That's why I want to open the door to it for people because I don't know. I feel like a life well lived is a life where you're, you're, you're playing the game. Like you're, you're interacting and collaborating and cooperating with the greater presence that's wanting and inviting you to, Hey, I got this great adventure created for you. If you would come along on the thing, if you would just take a step in the direction to come along with me, we're going to go on this really cool adventure. You're going to learn a lot of stuff. Yeah. Instead, I, I, I feel I, like we get like contracted, like you're talking about, like we get stuck on our, on our, what we want, what we think we want. That's probably not that great for us. Exactly. But you know, half the time it's not ours. It's what our parents wanted for us. It's what the generational traumas had that caused a certain distortion in the, in the RNA and Vetner's genomic research discovered just that the trauma's right on the RNA. Indigenous peoples have known that in mystics for hundreds of years. But what I've learned is something I, that in grad schools, it's, um, it's a phrase that stayed with me and it's allowing the person the dignity of their own process. Mm -hmm. So we don't know unless you can read souls and there's not that many people that actually can go that high. But when, when you are in communication with someone and you give them the dignity, like I'll say to someone, so, you know, they present their problem and I say, so, um, if someone else was sharing this with you, what would your advice be? Oh, well, I tell them to do da 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 I say, great, <laughs> always just a mirror for your answer. And almost every time in this work that I do with people, the first thing I do, Carrie, is I ask if they're safe enough to do the work. Like, is their unconscious willing to do the work? And sometimes I'll get one quarter of 1% willingness. And I'll tell them. I say, this is fantastic we have an opening to expand. And then the way I work with their unconscious, I'll say, okay, now can we take that a half of 1%, 1%, fantastic, look what you've just done. And in the space of maybe five minutes, they feel so loved and acknowledged in those parts that don't feel loved, that have been traumatized, that you know they'll say, oh yeah, and then I can ask a question and just like that, because they've connected themselves and you're a connector and I'm a connector, but there's multiple ways to connect spoken, written. I tell stories is how I connect people. I have people laughing so ridiculously at some of the things I say to them that they shatter this little crust around them. Yeah. The, the crust. That's success. So accurate. It's a crystallization, which is. they're actually trapped inside of their own trauma. And so they don't have the ability to go, past this lucite wall with a curtain and so laughter joy you know the game aspect i have oh. people singing i mean it's hysterical and by the time i establish enough trust with their unconscious i'll have them singing at the top of the lungs and then they dissolve into laughter and the issue explodes like a balloon popping yeah because and it's really just a crust i love that i it's like um this morning in my prayers what really came for me, for gratitude was this vision of the Carol shamans. I visited Peru several times and worked with the Carol shamans. And what I noticed about them is that they're so like joyful and present. Like they, and their capacity to serve is like 10 times anybody else there. You know, like we're all there in their retreat or whatever. And the Carol shamans are there. They're hauling like this huge load on their back. And they're just like singing along and trucking up the mountain. And like they're joyful and they're happy. And it's like no big deal to them. And we're all like, we have our backpack and we're like, <gasps> you know, like trying to get up the mountain. And I just, 
I think about that because then, then after they get to the top, then they lay out the despacho and then they start preparing the prayer mm-hmm. ceremony. Then they cleanse everybody off and they do all this, all this service and they're like happy as can be at the end. And I was thinking to myself today, like, wow, like that is how to expand the container is to realize that you can do more than you think you can. Like you, you can actually be in flow and joy with everything that's happening. And it's only the story that, you know, you've got. And, and I think in our Western culture, I also noticed like this group consciousness that has a story around like things being a burden or like things being hard. That's the, neg- that's the negativity that runs these. It's not bad. There's a negative polarity and a positive polarity. Now I've been a martial, for, martial artist for 54 years, right? There's things that I can do at my age that, that, that blow the minds of other kids because I have learned I don't, my physical body in its limited form can't do stuff. But when I access the breath, I can consciously expand myself so big that if one or five people attack me at once, I have them inside of my space. And then I just allow my innate knowingness to do whatever I don't think. You can't, an Olympic champion cannot win a gold medal if they think. But if you train yourself through conscious awareness, you know, I mean, and I do exercises every day so I can see 360. I mean, I can turn my neck, you know, with certain exercises that I do. I expand my breath so that when I run sometimes, it feels like I'm not even touching the ground. The, and, and all those Chinese movies, they're real. I studied in China. I've seen things that most people would say, that's Hollywood. But, you know, I studied there and I was the, one of the first goodwill tours to mainland China after Nixon opened it, you know, so wow. that 53 years, I mean, I broke my leg, you know, I mean, I knew I broke my leg, I couldn't stand on it, but rather than get upset when they picked me up off the bike path, um, I just started joyfully saying, oh my God, isn't this great? What they didn't know is I had asked a prayer on my knees to totally release any, any againstness against my mom. And that was the night before. So when I fell off the bike, that was my answered prayer. And yet I was able to respond that way because I have 30 or 40 years of practicing gratitude. When my and self- also seeing this, the synchronicities and, and knowing, yeah. knowing that that left knee is the, the feminine and it's, you know, it's your, Absolutely. Like and knowing what it means, like having the symbology that the spirit speaks through. <laughs> totally. And then in about five minutes, I said to the people that carried a little, a little five-year-old on her bike cut in front of her father. And the person in front of me in a, in a curve with a lot of sand. So rather than hit her, my bike went down. But I called the person I'm now engaged to at the time. And I said, hey, can you take a look at my arm and leg? Because holy mackerel, you've broken both of them. Because there are people that know stuff. And then I called my, my I'm a healthcare practitioner. So I called my partner. I said, hey, can I come over? I walk in and she goes, good Lord, you've broken your leg and your arm. What did you do? Um, it's like I'm looking at an x-ray. So I had a pre-standing appointment with my doctor on Monday. So I got scanned, which is a Russian technology. I celebrated the clearing of my mother issues. I didn't have to know how or why. When I walked into his office on Monday morning, he goes, how are you doing? Because I, I was diagnosed with Lyme disease at that point. I said, oh, my Lyme's great. I cleared my mother this week. And he goes, you sure did because he's not a traditional you know, doctor, he does other modalities. And I said, but can you look at my leg? So I put on a gown, I lay on the exam table. He lifts up the, he goes, my God, you've broken your femur. I said, how can you tell without an x-ray? He goes, it's 100% consistent. I had a half a basketball, it's a good thing I wear stretch pants. It looked like someone had cut a basketball in half, that's what the side of my leg looked like. He had be- did bee sting therapy which they use for people with MS and it ate the venom and I never got casted and I only get pain occasionally. If I judge someone or something, I get a little twinge in my leg. I call it my installed judgment meter. (laughs) That's turning bad stuff into blessings. And the irony of the whole thing was my mother was deadly allergic to bee stings she would have died had she gotten stung. And he proceeded to sting me, including the base of my skull, which hurt more than the break ever did. So you see how life is magical. 
And it's, it's us. We're the magic. Well, the thing that breathes us has this wonderful like game we're playing to overcome obstacles, gain awareness, share service and loving. And, I, oh, it's so true. Yeah. It's a magical adventure when you start paying attention to it. Yeah. yeah it's, and, it's just and like I, just, I really encourage people like stop believing traditional doctors when they tell you that you're crazy because you saw the same number three times or you saw 111 or 777 and you knew that it meant something or you saw a certain color or you saw an animal came across your path and you knew that message was for you or whatever the, the synchronicities are that's your journey you don't let anybody take that from you or like call it a name <laughs> but there's a certain discernment here where there are some people you share these things with and some you don't. The yes. nature of the negativity is when you share, you know, like for example, when my, when my retreat center burned down, I was awakened at 444 at night. I had just delivered a speech. I left my retreat. I left two people there, ran to New Jersey to do a speech. I was coming back the next morning and, and I was awakened at 444 and I heard, go home. There's a problem. So I elbowed David and said, David, I just got a message to go home. We drove home. Now, my mom had died in a house fire six weeks earlier. And so we're going down the path. And it's like, I feel my mother's presence in the backseat. I said, David, my mother's here. He goes, ask her what she wants. And just then, I looked up and saw all these billowing black clouds. It was my retreat center. Now, the blessing there was one man was suicidal. He's middle-aged. He'd been with a company for decades and they just laid him off. So he came because he was suicidal ideation. And the other one's daughter was nine months pregnant and he hadn't noticed and he was a single dad. So, you know, the man that couldn't feel the, the dad had a big heart and he, my kittens were upstairs where he was sleeping and he decided to sleep downstairs and not wake up the kitten, the kittens. But he woke up with something going like this on his shoulder. He was in the bottom bunk. And as a Vietnam pilot, he had passed out. And that same thing woke him up so he didn't crash. So he said his angel woke him up. And he crawled to the next room. He rescued the guy that was suicidal. What a surprise. The guy that burned my house down learned how to feel. And the guy that was suicidal decided he would much prefer to live. And James, David and I took a trip out west. And um, I was actually blessed to be a pipe carrier, something that has happened multiple times, because truth is truth. And whatever culture you're in, when they recognize truth, they want to acknowledge the truth bringer. And we're all truth bringers for our tradition and other traditions. But it turned out better than I could imagine, because when we went back home, I went off to do a training, and David went and bought a house. And because I'm awake and aware, I said to my colleagues, my husband's gone and bought a house today. She says, how do you know? I said, I just felt it. So I called him, David R. Morell, did you buy a house today? It's your wife. <laughs> <And> <laughs> he calls me back and he says, yeah, honey, I told the realtor as I signed your name that you would know. I said, he goes, it has potential, Lynn. And I think. There's yes, no getting away with anything once you're conscious enough. <laughs> no, no. Oh, that's why Everybody all my knows. called saying you have to go east to be with this person. And I said, no, but it was in the field. And there, that's why you can't lie. If you lie to yourself, everyone else will know. Even if you're not completely aware of your truth in your journey, if you can say, well, this may not be accurate, but I'm thinking that person doesn't like me. How many of times have I done that? Or they, they, they cut in front of me in line. They were clueless. They didn't notice that. You know, it's like if we give ourselves the benefit of the doubt and we give the other person the benefit of the doubt, and for all of your listeners, just take a minute and just kind of drop in. Is there anything I'm judging about myself or anybody else? And it's really simple. If there is, you can just say something like, I release judgment number one, judgment number two. Judgment number three. And I ask that they be transmuted and I gain greater wisdom. It's that simple. But the negativity says you've got to spend 30 years with a shrink. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. Your MD knows the absolute truth. I have to beg to differ. 
Now, doctors definitely have a place. I have some colleagues that are MDs that I would send and do send my people to in a heartbeat when they need an MD. But they're so in attunement. You know, it's like they, they know stuff. And they know, you know, they'll say things like, well, did you have any kind of domestic violence in the last 13 months? Just as a question that pops in. And they'll say no. And then they'll say, well, actually, something did happen 14 months ago. Well, okay, you don't need to share it with me. But if you do, that may have something to do with the fact that you have a sore throat and a sore back. Where, where were you hurt physically? Well, yeah, actually, they threw me over the back of the couch. You know, and then they tried to strangle me. My throat's been sore ever since. Are you still with them? Well, actually, I'm separated. But if I can just get my act together, he says he'll be good to me. Right. Now, and then your throat's like, no story. way. <laughs> true story. And I spent 19 years working on a board that works with victims of domestic violence, individuals and communities impacted by trauma. So I'm a trauma specialist. And we all have traumas. Birth itself, you know, is, it can be very traumatic. And so what we do with our traumas, they become stepping stones to greater joy or they become like this weight around us and we get stuck in our safe little contracted box. And let me tell you, negativity feels really good. Have you ever had a day when you just spiraled, you know, and your friends all hear about it and that so-and-so did that and this creature did this and it's like, and that's the news. You know, we're poisoned every day with a negative spiral. And it's normal and it's here. And we as spiritual beings having this wonderful adventure called life get to choose wisely. Oh, I know that feeling is very seductive, but I'm going to go, every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is happy. <laughs> like happy, 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 joy, 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 joy. <laughs> and just that will chase the barking dogs of negativity. And I've done all that stuff myself. And my, and my book that's coming out is an adventure story from the eye point of creatures in a place called Lovelyville. And every single thing that I used on my journey is in that children slash adult book. It's a fantasy. Wow. And my husband used to say it's a cross between Chronicles of Narnia, Lord of the Rings, and, Char and Charlotte's Web. I can't and, wait to read that book, Dr. And, and he, he, he was my editor. And in my closed down constriction, when he died in 2007, I put that book in the file cabinet and I left it for 10 years. And then I thought, you know, this isn't helping the world. And, and random friends that had read the first part said, when is it coming out? Father says, you need to do this book. I, I hear, but there's no, no juice on it. And then I wrote a goal and I made a mind movie with my friend, Natalie Ledwell. And in this mind movie, I put music, I pictured myself kicking over my head when I had neuropathy and they said I couldn't ever kick again. And that's what turned my lime around straight up in the air. Now my toes are, aren't, are pointed because I had no control from the knee down. And, but it was a miracle kick because I found that place that said to the doctors, no, you will not define me. And I do not want a handicap sticker. I am going to get well. And then I did right and left hand writing. I did whatever I could do that I share with my people. And all of those little tidbits are in this adventure story with, you know, creatures that live by a pond. And, um, Fantastic. So, well, and now you have to finish it because you're outing yourself. I'm, I'm only nine on old actor show. <laughs> nine pages away from nine the final pages. Page. It's been completely edited. I just have nine pages. To nine pages. Edited. And it's done. It's and I done. wrote that mind movie, and I was given by someone I did a kindness to in 1988 when she broke her neck and her boyfriend flew me out to work with her. She calls me on my birthday and said, hey, I just booked a suite for a cruise from Vancouver to Hawaii. Would you like to join us? I said, well, I want to finish this book. Would you mind if I worked on it? She goes, honey, I'm 89 years old. When I take out my hearing aid, you can dance on the bed and have a party. I won't notice. So I would write every night. I would do a meditation. I'd sit down. I never know what I'm going to say. I say, please give me the words that will inspire and lift the creatures here, they became living beings to me. And so that allowed me to finish it. And then my publisher edited it. And then now this is the final edit. Oh, so awesome. It's going to happen. And it's time because I was playing small 
because my husband was my editor and I threw a temper tantrum that he wasn't there to edit my book. Uh, it's kind of like the bottom line, you know? And so, so you're having a huge expansion this year, which oh, is wonderful. Every, every single level. New relationship, time. new book, new, new everything. New coast. New, new coast, house. new house, new life. New everything. Beautiful. And yet, each of us, every day, has that potential. Every we day. Just, we just look at our next day in view of the past. The past is the past. I can't go outside the front door here and recreate when I came through yesterday. That's a past life as far as I'm concerned. I can't go there. I can't go back to when I took a shower this morning. But I can be here and I can take everything that I've learned and I can go on my surfboard and hang 10. And if I fall off the wave, so what? So what? Just get back on. <laughs> and, and that, so that's what I really want to share, Carrie, is, is that we're all creators. We're all hummingbirds. A hummingbird is a joy bringer. When I was gifted with a Native American teaching lodge, the name of it is the Nyawe Lodge, which means the thank you teaching lodge. And the elder assigned me a hummingbird as my totem. I don't know if I ever told you that. Yeah, it's beautiful. You know, I love hummingbirds. Me too. Well, I really enjoyed this broadcast with you, Dr. Lynn. Wow, what a wonderful lot of stories and good wisdom and gold nuggets all throughout. I hope that everybody really enjoyed this uh, broadcast as much as I did. Very uplifted and expanded. And uh, visit Dr. Lynn at her website, and you'll be notified uh, when the book is released because we'll, you know, we're friends, so I'll know, and then I'll let you guys know. How's that? Or you can get on our list and find out. So, Dr. Lynn, I always give people kisses when we end the broadcast. Would you like to help me? Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I caught it. Your heart to mine. And to all of the audience members, may you be blessed beyond measure in this game of life with win-win, better than you can imagine outcomes, always for the highest good. Woo. I love that. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much. And everybody, I hope you have a wonderful week. And we'll see you next time on Soul Nectar Show. What joy. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.